Hey guys, this is the uh, Dwarf Fortress tutorial number six, and uh, today I want to focus on, uh, to start, I guess we'll talk about economy. So, uh, in this game there are other races besides dwarves. There are enemy races like goblins and shit like that, and demons, and there are also friendly races, or at least they start off friendly, like humans and elves and other dwarves. Each season, uh, a different race comes and trades with you, if you're friendly with them. Uh, autumn, dwarves, in the autumn, dwarves come, and they send a little guy who asks you what you want, and they, you know, order it for you when they come back. Uh, springtime is, uh, uh, spring is elves, mate. Nah, I think, yes, I think spring is elves and summer is humans. Um, basically, uh, in order for them to actually trade with you, you need to have a trade depot. So... You should build this, you know, right away, just in case. Because if you don't build it, then they, even if they show up, they won't land, and it'll just fuck up. So just get this, take take care of this, get it out of the way first. Um, normally, I like to build it inside my fort, like around, you know, somewhere in here, so they can actually come inside and be safe instead of being exposed out here. Because what tends to happen too later on in the game is uh, enemy races like goblins, they tend to come and in send like invasion forces or little ambush parties when other races come to trade with you. And this is bad, because when they're trading with you, if they die or become injured, because the goblins will attack them, if they die or become injured on your turf, then maybe they won't trade with you the next year, or sometimes they'll even declare war on you. So it's important to keep them alive. Um, so, but, you know, that's not really... You know, it's the beginning of the game, so it doesn't matter. So, to build the... Uh, to build the trade devo. First of all, you need to make a dwarf an architect. Um, it's you know, for designing buildings, you need to have them. You need to give them a special job. It's 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 pretty stupid. So let's do it to someone who's not busy, like uh, like the woodcutter, Mr. T. He's not doing shit. So what you do is you hover over Mr. T with V, or you can find him in the unit list and press V. So uh, if you find them in the the, uh, the list, press V, and then customize Y. Ah, uh, no, that's not what you want to do. And you just press C and go to them, and then go to B, labor, right? Oops. Preferences. P, preferences, and L for labor. And you need to find uh, building design, or architect, whatever it's called. Architecture, here we go. It's under other jobs, and it's called architecture. So... Go to other jobs, press enter, architecture, great. Got here. Now press B for buildings and then capital D. So shift D for trade depot. And just put it put it anywhere. Just just you know, we're doing it just to get it out of the way. And you need three pieces of something, three chestnut logs, easy. So they'll take care of that. Great. The second thing I want to cover, which involves economics, is crafting. Um you know, these dwarves are making uh, they're producing, you know, things for the fort, like doors and stuff. But you need trade goods in this game. Um, like, uh, like cups and shit like that. Like, stuff dwarves make to export. Now, you can make a variety of things. You can make cups, you can make trinkets, you can make any kind of shit you want. I think, in the beginning of the game, and even towards the end of the game, the most money-efficient thing to make are cups, or goblets. It only it requires one piece of stone, and you make three cups from them. And uh, if you just have people constantly making these cups, they get more and more skilled, and the cups become more and more epic, and they're worth more and more. And you can start putting jewels in them, which is what I have, like, right here, these jewels. You can mine them out, and have a jewel cutter cut them, and you can engrave the cups with them, and they become, like, worth crazy amounts of money. So, just find our, you know, our... Our carpenter and our our mason, because you know they're going to be doing crafting work anyways down here. You might as well make them uh, crafters. So do the same thing as before. Navigate to their labor with P and L, and go to stone working. No, I'm sorry. Uh, what is it? Crafts? Yeah, crafts. And give them give them stone crafting. Do this for both. This way, if they're not doing anything, they can, you know, go to the sto They can go to the shops and, uh, and just do shit on their free time. Now, you also have to build the shops in the first place, the crafters' shops, and they'll only build these shops if they have the crafting labor enabled, which we just did. So, 
go down to uh, you know B. Was it B and D? B W. Sorry, and this is where all the crafting places are, and find the uh, craft dwarfs workshop. So R, and just place like two of these guys down. Like, let's have them put. Let's put it down here. One out of. Here we go. We have two. Two shops. Great. And if you hover, if you press Q and hover over it, it'll say it requires wood or stone or bone working. That's what we just enabled with these dwarves. So they're going to run off and build that shop. And uh, for now, we're just going to let these guys go and do their thing. And uh, we'll see if something happens. Okay, guys, my architect just came and he finished off the, uh, the trade depot. Um, also, if you uh, press Z, it now says it's early summer. So the season changed. So we can expect... Uh, what do they say? Humans to come around the summer. So once the trade depot is up, press Q. See how it is. Um, right now, there's not really a lot of options. The first dwarf to trade will become the broker, and he's the one that basically manages all the deals. He gauges the prices and whatnot. And as he gets better at this, as he trades more and more, and as you you know actually do a lot of transactions, he'll get better at this, and you'll get better deals. So basically, right now there's no one here, so you don't require anyone to trade um, and only the broker may trade this is important because uh, you don't want any random ass dwarf coming over to trade because you if he's not good at brokering you're gonna get fucked you know they'll take advantage of you so you want to have be on you want to have it say only broker may trade um, you'll also notice these little pac-man ghosts running around that I mentioned last time actually they're just like rats they're just like rat people uh, Capybara is like like the biggest rodent in the world. I looked it up. It's nothing. They're just useless, so don't even worry about that. Secondly, our crafting workshops are done. As you can see, uh, I put another stockpile down, a finished goods stockpile. Finished goods is where all the you know the fucking finished goods will go, like cups. And I can see you'll you'll see that I have bins queued up. Uh, bins are where you store your trade goods. It's B and N. Now, now that you have these things done. You can add a task, and you want to do rock, because rock is the most abundant material. And you want to do rock mug. And you can either add casks, you know, tasks like this, or you can press R next to it. And an R means it's a repeating task. The dwarves will just keep making it. And that's what I want, honestly. I want them to just... If you have free time, just make some, make some crafts. Not crafts, I'm sorry. Mugs. Just make some mugs. And, uh, like I said, have the stockpile here. Have them keep creating bins, because you're going to have a lot of clutter. And uh, we'll wait for the humans to come, and maybe we can explain some trading when, when the time comes. Also, your animals, like these, these uh, livestock animals, you start off with two random ones. They're going to starve to death if you have them inside a room like this. Like, if you have them in like a meeting hall, they're going to starve to death. So, because they're, they're stupid, they won't eat grass or anything. So what you want to do is you want to create a butcher. So, B, W, and what's butcher? U. Create a butcher right here. Somewhere in your kitchen. And you want to give your cookers... Oh god, a giant bat. Uh, you want to give your cookers... I'm sorry, your, your farmers... The uh, butchery... Um, the butchery labor. And this is found under farming and related. It's the first one. Butchery. So that covers Keenan and Kel. Now they'll be butchers. So they'll craft this butcher shop, and when that's completed, we'll talk about killing off your own animals. Okay, the butcher shop is done. Now, uh, you don't really have to actually add any tasks here. This is what you do if you want to kill some animals. Now, this will be very important later on when you have a lot of kittens, too, but for now, let's focus on the buffalo. Press Z. So you're right here on the Z screen. And go to Animals and press Enter. Now you'll see your list of animals. Uh, water buffalo and your yak bull. It says they're unavailable. That means they're unavailable to be, like, adopted or anything. And if you press Enter, it means they can be adopted. But since these are basically livestock... It's not important. So you press B to slaughter them, and it'll turn purple, ready to slaughter. Now, if you press Q and hover over the butcher, it'll have slaughter animal to be queued. You don't have to do anything now. The, the farm will come over, drag the animal over, 
stick it in the butcher shop and he'll kill it, and a bunch of shit will appear, like blood and bones and all that fun stuff. Now, if I'm correct, I already made a bone stockpile or someplace where bones are going to be kept. Uh, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't do that. Well, we'll do that now. So you want to create a new refuse pile because bones are bones are going to be important. You want to save your bones because you can make ammunition for crossbows out of them. It's very important. Um, so create a little refuse pile. And you want to go to Q and press S to go to settings. Because you don't want them storing trash down here like shit that's going to stick up your fort like dead corpses. So you want to forbid everything. Press B for block all. And navigate down to bones and do P to permit bones. All you want is bones. Easy. Now they'll store bones out here and just double check that this actual trash stockpile does not store bones. And it doesn't. Good. And I actually forgot that you want shells too, so go ahead and edit this and go to allow shells as well. So now they'll butcher these animals and they will take the, the, you know, the important stuff like the bones down to the stockpile and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so uh, if you go to A for notifications, you'll see in purple that the water buffalo has been struck down. If you press Z, this is really useful by the way, if you press Z, it'll zoom to where it happened. And all the shit went down in the butcher shop. So if you press T, which is to view the inside of things, like if you press T over your farm, you'll see that, oh, there's seeds here, and there's actual plants, you know, everything is fucking great. But if you go over here, now this is what I was talking about before with cluttered. See next to the butcher shop, it has the little icon, and it says CLT? That means it's cluttered. If it's cluttered and full of shit, that means that uh, your dwarves, whatever dwarf is doing a task here, it's going to take a lot longer. And as you can see, there's a bunch of shit here. Like eyes and fucking cartilage and all this awful shit, like a skull. Ugh, this is awful. Sweet yak sweetbread. I want to know how, I wanna know how they, that happened. How the fuck do they make sweetbread out of this? Um, anyway, so they have all this crap. All this edible food. And all these, uh... Oh, God. Sweetbread. I don't know how they're doing this. Anyways, you're going to have all this shit here, and they're going to drag it. As you can see, they already did. Water buffalo meat. 13. Holy shit, these are good. I go, I guess they're really big animals. So there's going to be a lot of food coming from this. And as you can see, also, there's if you press K to do, you know, inspect shit, there's a swarm of flies. There's going to be a lot of shit coming down here, because there's, there's a two dead animals in here. It's going to be a lot of shit. So your dwarves are going to dump this crap out, hopefully outside, like right away. They already have. A nervous tissue is here, a skull, some hair. Now, also, you can get, like, leather from these, too, which is useful, but right now we don't have any leather workers, so we're not going to worry about that. But, uh, you want to make sure you have some barrels, too, because you're going to have a lot of shit to deal with. And, perfect, our stockpile is working just as planned. If you press K, there's bones here. Great. So, everything is working according to plan, and I just saw a dwarf hauling over some cups, See how he's got a cup in his hand? To check to see, see how he's, the dwarf is blinking. Half the screen is the dwarf, half of it is a cup. If you press V on the dwarf and press uh, G for, I'm sorry, I for inventory, you can scroll down and you can see he has a pick in his hand. If you go to the bottom, you can also see he's hauling a chalk mug. He's going to bring it and he's going to put it in a bin. If you press K, hover over the bin and press enter, you can see everything inside. There's ropes and there's mugs. Great. And these little things next to it, like this little line, it denotes quality. So it's well crafted. And this is just, just a regular mug. And these dwarves are going to keep crafting this shit. Great. Uh, the human traders still haven't come yet, but at least now you have some trade goods being made. Uh, you know how to butcher your own animals. And this is incredibly useful later on. Um, and your bone stockpile is working. Great. So now let's chill out a little bit more and see if anything happens. Also... Um, since you have no need for miners right now, or you don't have anything urgent that needs to be mined, just have them do some strip mining, like I have them down here. You can mine for rocks, which is good for anything, like building cups, and you can also find jewels, like this. An adventuring. So just have them dig if they're not doing anything, because why not? You're going to need this stuff eventually. So uh, we're going to chill out some more, and hopefully something interesting happens soon. Okay guys, I forgot to mention something else really important, and this is the uh, brewery. Um, I should have covered this before when I was talking about foods, but whatever. 
So dwarves only drink beer unless they're sick. We have some we have some beer, but it's important to keep a constant, you know, flow of it, or else if you run out you're gonna be you're gonna have a bad time. So B W and what is it? Brewery B maybe? No, that's a boyer. A brewery. Um uh, um, so it's not a brewery, it's called a still. So L. And right now you only need one. Just put it, I don't know, put it right above the kitchen. Who gives a shit? And at the beginning of the game, we already gave their two cookers the uh, brewing labor. Yep, see, so yeah, oh, maybe. Let's see. Farming related. Yep, yeah, brewing. So they already have brewing enabled. So they're going to come over here and they're going to build this. I hope. Meanwhile, our dwarves are. There was a lot of meat coming out of this butcher shop. So as you can see, it's starting to pile up. Um, let's check our flow of barrels. And it's because we don't have any more barrels. We have one, but I no, haven't got around to it. So what I did was, since they're not building barrels and they're building these fucking mugs, I took off repeat order for this one. And I have queued up a bunch of barrels. And if you have an A next to it, like here, it means that it's it's like set up to be tasked. It means they're, as of right now, they're doing it. So someone's going to come down there and build some barrels and we can get all this exposed food back where it belongs. And this guy's going ahead and, oh, and he built it. Great. And this is another reason why you need barrels. You need barrels for booze. It's fucking important. Uh, the barrels are some important shit. So press A and do B. Brew a drink and just do like, you know, max order of these, whatever. You don't need to always do it. And that's why we have separated stockpiles, to keep an eye on your booze track, you know, how much booze you have. So we're doing okay right now, because we only have seven dwarves, but you just want to keep an eye on that. And I just figured that was important to get out of the way. At least now you have someone who's going to be brewing. So just always remember to keep an eye on your food and drink stockpiles. Hmm. Still no immigrants yet. Uh, no migrants, no enemy, you know, no crazy... Uh, a Dralfa? Oh, God. Oh, these are underground. Whatever. A large-bodied grazer with a thick mane that feeds on... Okay, well, whatever. This is all evil shit that's underground. We don't have to worry about this shit right now, so just whatever. We'll cover it later. Um, I guess that's really all for this video. Covered economy and brewing. Um, hopefully soon we can cover immigrants and trading. Um, just Right now it's just a waiting game. You're just building up supplies and building up foods and whatnot, waiting for the game to get a little bit harder. Um, until then, I guess we'll uh, leave it here. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you know we're able to get some solid advice from this. And we'll kick it off next time. Peace.